Welcome to Tiny Code Christmas Day 8. Hope you had a great weekend. Today we're going to talk about rotation and we're going to have a think about how we might apply it in a pixel based effect like this. We're going to do a bit of an overview on rotation and then we'll break it down in the platform specific sections. This effect is based on something that I saw Aldroid do in a byte jam a few weeks ago and I thought it would be a great effect to introduce the basics of rotation. What we need to do is we need to use our sine and cos functions to get to um, help us get the location of the circles that we're going to put for rotation. So this circle here, obviously the red one, is an example of what we'll be working towards. So you can see that spins around depending on which direction, whether I increment the angle positively or negatively. And you can see that if I increase the angle, I go counterclockwise. If I decrease the angle, I go clockwise. So sine and cos give us the y and x values of this position of this red dot on a unit circle. So if we want to rotate something around a point at uh, the origin in this case, we can use sine and cosine to do it. Obviously, if we just use those values as they are, they will be between one and minus one. So they will just literally rotate around one unit. But if we just multiply it, it'll give us more of a distance and we can rotate it over a larger arc. So I've modified this a bit here to make it a bit clearer. And you can see that we have five circles that have been drawn. The size of the circle is changing, but, and they're rotating. After that, the rest of it is a pixel manipulation where it just takes that color, moves it on down the line and increments it by one. And you end up with this nice effect. I've added a custom palette to make this a bit Christmassy and I'll in, that's included on the day eight link if you want to use it. And each one of these is given by an angle. We get the sine and the cosine and then we multiply it by some value to move it that distance from the center point. We are going to start with the tick 80 and if you're here for the peak weight you can skip ahead. So I'm going to set this up with a time value. I'm going to clear the screen first. I'm going to make t equal to t plus 1. I'm going to make a equal to 0 and a is going to hold our angle. What I want to do is I want to print a circle. I'm going to print it at the center of the screen and I'm going to print a or give it a radius of 5 and the color 2. So we have our circle here. What I need to do is I'm going to add the cosine of a and I'm going to add the sine of a. And I'm just going to alias these. Um, cos equals math dot cos. Sine equals math dot sine. So let's take a look at this. I've made a equal to t. So basically my angle is going to go up by 60 every second. Um, might be a bit, if we're dealing in radians, that's quite um, considerable. So I just made it, make it 0 0.1 and we'll see what this looks like. This is actually rotating. So this is rotating by about one pixel around. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that cosine value. And again, it's a value between minus one and one. And I'm just going to multiply it by 10. And let's take a look and see what happens. Excellent. So now we have our motion in the X axis. And if I do the same here and multiply this by 10, we have our motion in the Y axis around that center point and we can see that we have our rotation and again I can increase this by to 20 and we'll see that we get this nice circular motion. If I make them uneven, so for example I make the y value 40 versus 20 for the x value, it will travel more in that y direction than it does in the x direction. And if I change the angles that they're doing the calculations off, you get these nice kind of organic movements. So if uh, a kind of a thing that resembles a figure eight every now and then. So what we're after doing is we're after unbalancing the X and Y and we're after basically making it so that we're getting the sine and cosine of two different angles, which gives us this slightly different, um, different look. And if I put this back to 40, you'll see that we get 
something like this. And these are known as Lissajous curves, and we'll be taking a look at them again tomorrow. So now we have one of these, which is great, but we want five of them. So I am going to put a for loop for five of these. So we want five of them. And I'm gonna split out my, my calculation here as to, to what's going in. So I'm gonna bring my calculation for A down here. And what I want it to be is T, first of all, but we'll, we'll come back to that. So math.pi times two is a full 360 degrees. If I divide that by five, that gives me five equal segments for that angle. And then if I multiply that by I to give me the current one. So let's just run that. So now we have five equally spaced circles and I am going to add T to that. And now they rotate. Again, I might just slow that down a bit. Brilliant. So this rotation is the essential component of the effect. And if for some reason you wanted to go backwards, you just change the direction of the angle, or you can keep time constant depending on how you feel about it. And you can either add depending on how you feel about it and you can add time at the end or subtract time to make it go in reverse the effect also had the radius of the circle growing so in and that was essentially in a, a sine motion as well so if I just add bring this down onto a new line if I just make it um, five, which is the radius, plus the sine of the angle, plus or the angle, of, we'll use t for time, because we don't want a different one for each individual one, we want all of the circles to be pulsing at the same time, and let's just see what that looks like. Okay, so we need, I'd say we'll make this a bit bigger. We'll make the sine seven and we'll multiply, we'll multiply this by three. So now you can see it grows and increases. And again, we want our circle to always have some kind of a radius. So it's important that when we get our plus one or minus one, we're going to have to have that increase. So if I bring this down to six, for example, maybe I could do three, that would go down to nothing or, and scroll back up again. So whatever value you have here, if you multiply this by the sign, you need to make sure that it's capable so that you don't go below zero and Don't want to go below zero or your circle will disappear. The next component of the effect is a for loop and that for loop is zero to visit every pixel on the screen and I use the pix function to set a pixel, but I can also use the pix function to retrieve a pixel. So this particular pixel effect is concerned with reading a pixel from the screen, getting its color, and putting that pixel back on the screen somewhere else. So one over to the left. So your challenge for today is to finish off this effect in 256 characters 
or less. Bonus points for fitting in a Christmassy palette. So we need to get a circle on the screen and we want to get that circle rotating. So I am going to use circ fill to draw the circle and I am going to draw it in the center of the screen and I am going to give it a radius of five and I'm going to give it color two and if you run it we see that we have a circle in the middle of the screen. So what I want to do now is I want to give it an angle. I'm going to use A to represent the angle and I'm going to make it equal to T at the moment. Okay, so basically the angle is going to be the time, which means that in Pico A terms that is going to be one revolution a second. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the cosine of A, as that gives us the X value, and I'm going to add the sine of A for the Y value. And if we run it, we see that that appears to be rotating. For now, I am just going to move the clear screen inside the loop. And we see that we have a circle that is rotating, albeit in a very tiny radius. So I'm going to expand this out a bit and multiply it by 10. I'm going to move this down onto the next line for clarity. And I'm going to add 10 here as well. So we're taking that one to minus one value that uh, comes from the sine and cosine. And we are going to use it to get a rotating circle. And again, I can make this 50 and you see that it is on the y-axis now it is traveling much further because I've made it multiplied by 50 and on the x-axis I can make it slightly more so I'm just going to put these back to something a bit more reasonable 40 and 40 but I can also um, add just this to get us a more organic pattern and this is something that we'll be talking about uh, for tomorrow's challenge if I get the sine and the cosine of different angles if I get the sine and the cosine of different angles I get this erratic but somewhat organic movement instead of it being a straight circle so that's something to keep in mind these are generally called this is you curves and they're something that can give a nice um, a nice effect as we'll see tomorrow so let's go back to our circle. And now we don't want one circle, we want five circles. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a for loop for i equal one to five, do. I'm going to make this equal to i divided by five, first of all. So we have angles. We're dealing in full turns here. So we want to divide this one turn into five equal turns. And then I'm just gonna add T and let's see what happens. Okay, I'm gonna slow that down. Now we have five rotating circles. And the next effect then is a pixel effect. And basically we'll need to visit every pixel on the screen. And we will use the pset function to set it to a certain value, but we'll be setting it to a value that we get from the pget function. So what this pixel effect does is it takes the pixel to the right, moves it to the one to the left essentially or moves it to the to the current location. So for each pixel on the screen, what's the color to the right to x plus one, add one to it and set the current pixel to be that. And pget will get you the current pixel value color add one to it and use pset to set that pixel value. 
and again you'll need a variable to figure out your x equal to i mod 1 to 8 um, y equal to i divided by 1 to 8 and you can use your pick set x y and p get so your challenge is to finish this off and you can see here we are at about 176 characters so this should be very doable in 256 but try and come up with a nice palette and again yesterday i outlined a tool for creating custom palettes in pico 8 so you can give that a go pick out a palette and apply it here best of luck